Welcome, adventurers. Today we're going to turn all this stuff into this stuff. And uh, when I started, I wasn't really sure that I was going to do that. I was contemplating what I wanted to do, a few projects on my mind. And uh, I spent a little time thinking about that, as you can tell by my awesome camera work. So if you like seeing me wipe off my workspace, hit the like button. Subscribe to watch me silently contemplate and hit the notification icon so that you know the next time I have nothing going on in the first 60 seconds of my video. Now that I've come to an idea, I'm going to make some uh, stuff out of this foam. And it's going to be like drop habitation pods for colonization. I wish I had half inch foam still, but I've used it all up and I don't have a local supply of it, so I need to order some more. So unfortunately I had to use one inch foam, which makes these a little bulkier than I wanted them to be, but I think the end result was good. Now I've decided I wanted these to be about uh, three inches tall, because there's going to be an insert for the floor and the ceiling, so that'll take up some of that space. And once I figured that out, I cut up a bunch of them. And now I want to make them about 10 inches long, I believe, by about six inches wide. Can't exactly remember my dimensions. Of course, you can make these whatever size you want them to be. I chose that because that's what I wanted. And here I've cut up my blocks. Got the long ones for the long sides and the short ones for the short sides. And uh, there you go. It's just a box. Pretty simple. Now let's make it really complicated. I'm going to cut off some 45 degree angles from the ends so that I can miter the joints. In other words, make them come together at an angle. I'm going to do that on all the ends of the pieces. And I'm also going to do it to the outside edges to give a bevel, as you see here, coming down towards the center. And like so. And that's kind of what it looks like when I'm done. Now I've decided I want to make a doorway area, and so I took uh, the one of the shorter pieces, bisected it, and then cut it off at another 45 degree angle so that I could create an opening for a door. Pretty simple. Here I'm just test fitting the pieces together to make sure it looks right before I continue on. And that's the basic idea. Now for the floor. I need to cut some rectangles to fit into the inside. And so it's about what, four and three quarters wide by six inches long. Oh, I'm sorry, eight and a quarter. And so I cut those. I test fit it to make sure it actually fits in there. And bada bing. We've got some sort of interior floor. I know this is looking really basic right now, but it comes together very much in the end. But that's the basic premise. A box is all we're making. It's just got some interesting angles. So, a little hot glue. And put on one of the shorter end pieces. Making sure to line up the bottom edge and the corners so that it all is a contiguous piece there. Now I 3D printed some doors that I got from Second Dynasty. Actually, I modified them a little bit because I wanted them to be a lot thinner than they were. So thin that, in fact, the resin is translucent there in the center of the door. <laughs> Testament to the uh, Elegoo Saturn. Now I need to make a place for the... Uh, to cover up this hole in the front, actually. And so I mark it as such. And then I'm going to remove that section. And then, because it's actually going to have a recessed lid, I'm going to take off another 5 mils, half a centimeter, because that's the thickness of the foam core. A little hot glue on the top of the door frame. The two ends of the panel 
and then stick that in place. Now I want to cover up some unsightly edges, so a little piece of medium density chipboard and cut the size, glue into place. Now I wanted legs for these things because you know they don't have actual foundations, they're not structures built on the ground, they're dropped off by spaceships and I wanted those legs to follow the contours of the structure. So I cut some uh, 45s off of my off cuts and then figured out after a lot of toying around with where I wanted them I used uh, paper, uh, paper clips, I used toothpicks to help sure up the joint. I stuck them in, stuck them in there, and I used some Eileen's Tacky Glue, which actually I found was not a strong enough bond overall, uh, even after letting it cure for a couple of days. So ultimately I went back and re-secured all these with hot glue, because I found that they were very weak, especially when I was starting to another process by filling in all the gaps with spackle. Unfortunately I didn't record the spackle part, but I did record the me playing with magnets part, so that's cool, right? I, I guess. So you gotta figure out which is north and south for you. It's arbitrary. Using the tip of my hot glue gun, I make a hole too close to the edge there, and uh, I stick in magnets and I repeat that for all the legs and the top struts because these are stackable terrain. Now I want to make some flooring to cover the flooring inside the structure so I got some ready board. It's the stuff that peels easily from the dollar store. I peel one side because there was no reason to peel the other side it wouldn't be seen. And I mark out a basic grid just to look like floor tiles. There was no actual measurements. This rule is a little more than an inch wide, so I guess it could suffice for that. But I lay out the grid pattern, but it's not even, and that was intentional. The sides are a little uh, narrower than the middle. It'll make more sense later on because of the final step that we do that kind of covers up part of the edges, so it'll look like it kind of implies that they are uh, the same width. Now uh, here I'm cutting this piece to fit. I cut all of them because I discovered it would be easier to put them in, in uh, individually as opposed to one solid piece. Cut to fit. Hot glue. Glue them all in place. Like that. And repeat until complete. Now you get to enjoy the fact that I uh, misaligned one of the tiles and uh, the hot glue set right about now. So there was no way I could do anything about it. Now you'll see that I used some plaster and some EVA foam to cover up the magnets and the joints just because I wanted them to look a little more clean like it was one solid piece or at least welded or something. And you can see it's got the removable lid. I've already attached the greebles. Protected the foam with uh, Mod Podge and black paint and then primed it with this slate gray. Now I liked the look of the slate gray, so I decided that was actually my base color. I figured gray is a pretty good color for space age stuff. Gray and white seems to be pretty common in all of the sci fi -dom. So now I'm gonna paint all the greebles with a uh, dark metal from Army Painter. Black on several pieces, and then touch up, well not touch up, but select a few little pieces to make gold. And here we're going to make a kind of a design on these with the blue painter's tape. And I'm going to stipple on paint to make it look like it's old and faded, chipped off with this. The other nice thing is so you don't screw up your lids because they all look very much alike. If you paint them identically, you might try to put the wrong lid on the wrong container and since these are all bespoke custom built units made to fit one another the lids are not necessarily interchangeable and there we go some weathered paint effect now we're going to paint the floor this very light gray give it a good dark wash to bring out some of the low spots. 
and of course my favorite technique for weathering the outside of things especially water and then basic thinned uh, black paint water with a touch of spot removing agent now I wanted to add a little character a little rust and grime so I use my rusty reddish brown oil wash hit a few places with some black oil wash to bring out detail little pastel you know uh, weathering powder dry brushing of course knocking your project around because that's ubiquitous and it's almost done I think they're looking pretty neat right now but the insides need something something to make them look very space age and to cover up my bad paint job so let's use this I don't suggest you buy mylar covered bubble wrap I happen to have some in my garage because it's very expensive but it definitely makes these things look a lot more sci-fi on the inside here's one with some blue like teal colored stripes one with some linear yellow stripes and the color coding can be for whatever you want maybe it's a science hab or an armory or just barracks you see here they're stackable and the nice thing about the magnets is it makes them more stable on the table you can align them like this you can make a tower unit if you want Here's just a shot with the uh, interior and the exteriors more of the interior a ladder going up to a hatch that I put on the roof of each one of them you can set up real ambushes because the players won't necessarily know what's inside of these hab units you can make little prison cells out of them gives you height advantage sight line obstructions and an added bonus make a pretty decent dice tray okay maybe not the best dice tray but whatever you can still use it to transport all your figures they fit in there real well you can put quite a few in this one I made them fairly large and now your figures are protected you can store them in there these are stackable the magnets again help them stack a little easier and there's that let's go do some gaming well thank you for watching now go have an adventure in crafting